Hey everybody, it's Patrice Sandstrom and today is Friday the 20th of November. That's hard to say actually. And today is class number two of our um, four class series with Aaron Wheelock and me talking about converting over to command. And today specifically, we're really going to get into the lead accelerator. Um, some of the, as always, we're going to talk about challenges, opportunities, um, and everything in between. And we hope that everyone that participates will share their story. We are with Keller Williams Danville, which is my market center. Yay. Um, and again, I'm Patrice Sandstrom and I have a small team in the San Francisco East Bay. And uh, Aaron Wheelock is from New York. So Aaron, do you want to say something about yourself? Yeah, well, my name is Aaron Wheelock. I have the Wheelock team here in New York City. Um, I don't know if you can hear their script practicing behind me, which is very exciting. Love some good script practice time. And yeah, I'm excited to get going. That's one of the things we should do someday is kind of do a script practice with everybody. I know our class, uh, our office recently had some of us do scripts online. And so um, I would love to see a thumbs up if, if that would be something of value for, value for the Danville office. Um, maybe, oh yeah. So we have one. Everyone else that doesn't show your picture, you have to do like a cartoon. Oh, there we go. A cartoon thumbs up. I love those things. That's awesome. Um, you, you guys, the other person that we have here is a special guest. Um, so we have a few members of my team, so that's awesome. So thank you, Serene and Diana, for coming. And uh, David Ferguson is actually, he's an inspector. He actually could take care of your inspection business. He also is um, really specializes in command. So he actually began the command Facebook group, the most popular one that has like 40,000 members. Um, he also was on, I was able to be on the labs. You were a labs advisor, right? You actually ran a group. And so I was fortunate to get to be on that group. Um, and he's actually worked very closely with our region and KW International and really knows a lot about command. So when I talk about someone really helped me to switch over to command, David was a big part of that. So David, I'd love for you to tell us a little bit about yourself and any, any thoughts you may have as well while we've got you. Okay, well, as Patrice said, I'm David Ferguson. I actually live up in Vacaville. And as she said, I am a home inspector in the area. Um, I'm also a labs advisor and I've been part of the command development process uh, since January of last year. Uh, so I've been very involved from the ground up. Um, and as like Patrice said, also I run the, the KW Facebook group, the KW Command Facebook group. Uh, we have just under 40,000 members. Uh, so if anyone ever needs any advice, feel free to uh, find me on that group, find me on Facebook, find me on Instagram, I'm everywhere. Uh, and I'm always here as a resource for anyone. Uh, I'm very passionate about helping Keller Williams. You know, two-time bold grad, I've uh, been to family reunion a few times. I love the brand and love helping people. And honestly, if you always come from contribution, you can't go wrong. I love that. And I actually met David because he was doing a bold 100. We were having an either an ALC meeting or we were doing some lead calls and recruiting for the ALC and he came over and I think you needed like five more people. And so of course I ran around the office and found uh, contacts for him. So he is a real bold trooper actually. So you earned my respect that day and, and have just been impressing me ever since. So thank you for everything, David. And, and what's hilarious about that day is Patrice, you were actually my number 100. When oh, I, did I was. My board 100. <laughs> 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 whoop, whoop. <laughs> special. Yeah, I love that. And by the way, he's very passionate about his work as well. So, um, and you do inspecting all through the area, right? Correct. I go basically as far south as Oakland, um, all of Contra Costa, then all the way into Napa, Santa Rosa, Healdsburg, and all the way over to Sacramento. I live, like I said, right in the middle. So I basically go within an hour and a half to two hours of Vacaville. So nice. all of the, basically all of the East Bay, all the way down to Oakland, I cover on a regular basis. I love that. That's awesome. So, well, thank you, David, for joining us. It's great. Hopefully you'll chime in. Um, again, this is super interactive. So I'll kind of tell you how we typically go through it. So uh, we'll talk about this, my story, how we got in there, some ideas and some ads that we are doing, the stats for the ads that we've been doing. And really, we do want it to be interactive for you guys to ask us specific questions. Um, and then we're going to do we're going to do an actual ad. So hopefully, well, I assume that most of you are on your computer, although, of course, you certainly could be on your phone. Um, but I think I've done it before where I've actually just followed along and done the ads. In fact, the first time we did it was with our ALC meeting. So, so does anyone have any questions before we get started so that we can ensure that we're giving you the most value? I'll, I'll take that as a no. And so I'll just kind of get started telling my story. Please feel free to stop me 
If you feel that we're speaking too fast, please let us know. Um, I don't get to see the chat because I'm working on one screen with multiple things. So if someone needs to interrupt me or would like to interrupt me, please actually just say something verbally because I likely will not see you. So, okay. So um, basically uh, my switch to command and we talked about it a little bit last week was that um, when COVID happened, um, I needed to cut back my expenses. We found that uh, I was really concerned that if we weren't gonna sell houses for six months, oh my gosh, what were we gonna do? And my third party system seemed to be a waste of, of money. So we switched over. David actually was very helpful with that for us. Um, started moving our command, uh, our system over to command and it took several weeks actually. It was definitely a lot of work. However, once we were there, it only made sense that we began to use the tools of command. And so kind of a happy circumstance that we just fell into is that we began to use the lead accelerator ads. Um, I'm sure many of you have done this before, but we used to spend money to boost our uh, open house ads on Facebook. So we already had a monthly spend on Facebook, but we never received any ads from it ever. Um, I hoped that people went to the open houses, but to be honest, we never asked. So there was no way to track it. So all of a sudden, Kristen had our ALC do the lead accelerator tool and I was surprised by how simple it was. And so the minute we switched over, that was the first thing we did. We started doing ads. And I think the first one, I was so excited. We spent $20 and I think I got 24 leads and I was like, oh my God, this is a game changer. Um, again, especially with COVID, here we are in a pandemic and I just got 24 new leads. And because we were such big open housers, it seemed really important. So Fast forward now, um, I'll tell you our numbers. So, so far we've been doing this um, for about a hundred days or so. Um, Cause like I said, it took us a while to switch over. We've had 93 campaigns. I've spent $1,905 and we have had 60, 655 leads. Um, and then we've also had an additional 200 engagements. And so I will make sure to be honest that these are leads, these are not clients. Um, these are definitely people that are to be nurtured, you know, and when we speak with people, um, I'm not always expecting for these guys to close instantly, although we're hopeful that that will happen. I know Sheila Zakaria said she just posted on Facebook recently on our Danville page that she closed someone that was a Facebook lead that she had about six months ago. So I'm hoping that we can kind of use that as that three to six month engagement because these people clicking on homes are kind of just getting started. So in any case, it can happen, but again, this is a database class and on our last class, which is gonna be December 9th, Aaron's gonna teach us about the MREA database and what we should do based on the book that Gary Keller wrote. And what he talks about is that we need to have as many people in our database so that we can be in relationship with them, right? So that's 655 opportunities for me to create a relationship. And again, we talked about this number last week, but what the MREA tells us is that we need to touch these people 36 times a year and we cover it over a two year cycle. So that means if we touch these 655 people, um, let's see, 72 times over a two year period, we're going to be expecting to get some sort of return. So I'm just qualifying that because this is new. We don't have any, my team doesn't have any closed transactions yet from that, but we have definitely had some conversations. I'll also be frank that there are people in there that did not want us to call them. And so that does happen as well. I think that happens with any and all lead sources. And so we just try to be really gracious with them explain kind of what's going on, who we are and build a relationship and we keep them in our database. Because again, we know that we have to touch people 36 times a year for it to work. And if any of you guys were in mega camp, there were several teams, several mega teams that do a lot of business that were really talking about how they're having to touch people 13, 14, 15, even 20 times before anything happens. And again, because this is our office, I've I don't know who it was. There was someone who just capped, I believe, and they talked about how they had to speak with someone 22 times before they were able to close that deal. And this was a new agent. So again, these are, these are leads and these are things that have to be touched. But again, it's very well worth it because what we're trying to do is build our database. So Erin, I'd love for you to comment on this because again, this is your specialty. Yeah. No, I'd love to add something. I don't know how many of you know Jeff Cohn. He just came over to KW, um, has a huge mega team, was number one at Berkshire Hathaway. Uh, and then came over and joined. And um, I've had the privilege of working with him a little bit. And one of the things that he told me is it's all about the data, right? And that's exactly what this is, is this streamline that streamlines the data to us. You know, think when I think about him, I know that he has three fourths of the population of Omaha in his database. How powerful do you think that is, right? It doesn't matter if 
an eighth of those people are uh, transacting ever, you know, that's really powerful numbers. And it's all about getting the data, collecting the data from people. And these are people that are clicking on the ad. And of course, some people don't want to hear from you, but we're still getting their information. Some of it is wrong. You're still getting the information. You are building the data for yourself instead of people like Zillow, Street Easy. If you're from New York, I see a couple of faces. Um, instead of that, collecting the data for you, right? We're not paying them for it. We are collecting it for ourselves. I really want to stress that. I, I, I love that. And you know, it's really interesting. And again, this is certainly no commercial for Facebook. However, it is for the lead accelerator tool is we know that these guys are pretty local, right? Because we're running our ads that are in our geographic area. So the likelihood we, I mean, typically, I think most of our ads were, we're assuming that we're attracting buyers. However, there's a good likelihood that we're actually building homeowners. Because again, when you're getting someone from Zillow or a third party, you really don't know where in the world that they came from. They only just happen to be looking at property in your state. So, you know, you may not ever transact with them. They could have decided to move to a completely different area of the world. And this way it's neat because of these ads. And again, it works perfectly with the database is you know that these guys are living in their, your locale because you've actually selected that, which is really neat. So I would definitely love to hear from anyone in here. Is there anyone else that's actually doing lead accelerator ads? And I won't make you teach the class or anything. I'm just kind of curious. We have 16 people that are in the class today. Kind of how many people are using the lead accelerator tool and um you know obviously if anyone wants to comment that'd be awesome too and looking around to see oh hi karen i'll just join in really quickly and say that you know right now with covid um i'm not exactly sure how it is for you guys in california but i know we it seems as though we are knock on wood um nearing another lockdown and you know this is so important, especially if you do go into a lockdown, right? Like in New York, we couldn't show, we weren't allowed in properties, we weren't allowed appointments, et cetera, for a while. But this is a way that you still get to build your business while you can't be out there, right? So I think now more than ever, this is such an important class. And um, thank you, Patrice, for teaching it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and again, that's an excellent point, Erin. I mean, again, and going back to why I started Command in the first place is we don't know what's going on in the next little bit. So it's really nice that we can really use our time well and be in relationship and get into the kind of habits that are required. Because we all, everyone always asks what the secret sauce is, right? What's the secret sauce to building a fabulous business? And then mostly it's doing the stuff. That Action. It's kind of, yeah, and the stuff that doesn't seem exciting and that's kind of boring. And I think sometimes in our industry, there's a lot of um, shiny objects where it looks like you're going to get that cash right away, right? You go and show someone who, even though they're not serious, you feel like, well, at least I have a chance of closing that business. And to be honest, I feel like, you know, we don't have a commute anymore. We have so much more time on our hands. There's never been a better opportunity to really get in there and to do the stuff that, you know, again, we typically can find a lot more excuses in our daily lives if we didn't do that. Or certainly I know that as well. And then I also want to say, the other thing, which is neat, and again, I've shared my statistics, and I feel like those are pretty decent, but right now we're at 291 a lead. About a month ago, I was at 190 a lead. So I don't know if there's something different from the market, and I, I, I also don't know if maybe we've done a poor job with a poor job with the ads, right? Because the reality is, is once we start doing this and we start getting that data, then like everything, once you track, you can actually make it better. So we can look at these numbers and we can figure out which, um, which ads are working more efficiently for others. And then we can really continue to target that as well. So go ahead, Erin. I know I want to ask you more about that. Are you uh, reusing ads often? Are you going back to the ones that worked and copying them and redoing them? Or is it all new all the time? So and, well, that brings us in kind of to this, to where we're going next. So to be honest, um, our team has been thankfully pretty busy. And so I feel like we're chasing our tail. So for now, we've really only been focusing on advertising for our listings. So it mm -hmm. really isn't, we don't have a whole lot of just lead capture where we're getting incredibly creative because we're using our listings. And so this is kind of a two-part strategy where we're looking for buyers for our listings, which means it's a lot more targeted as well. Um, I think if we were looking for something more broad or gave something that may be a little bit more compelling or found our favorite listings or the best opportunities, um, you know, like a really good buy in the neighborhood where the prices are low, I would bet that our numbers would really skyrocket, right? Because that's what people want is a wow factor. So we're eager, they're gonna have to, if we were working on impressing them with something that was unique, I believe that we would actually get a much higher rate of return. 
for now, what we've just been doing, again, it's kind of the two-pronged approach. We're doing very broad. And so I think that that's, that's hurting our numbers is we are looking for buyers for our own specific listings. And because we've had so many and it's been harder to keep up with them, we're only doing that now because we do have that commitment to the seller. However, we have expanded our team. We've hired a virtual assistant so that she can start managing this better. And our goal is to hire an ISA. And the minute we have that person on board, then we're going to get a lot more specific. So, so the things that you can advertise or that I've heard about, and partly this is from our own experience. And then of course, our um, Sheila in our office who teaches lots of classes, she really uses this at a high level as well. And so some of these are her ideas and then other ideas that I've heard from other agents. So number one, you can advertise your own listings. It says something like, and you'll see it later, click on here for more information. So that's where people are getting these um that's where these leads are coming from. And the way it works with Facebook is that there's some of their data is already inside. So when they click that button, whatever Facebook has for you is gonna come. A lot of times, sometimes it's only an email, sometimes it's only a phone number. Every once in a while, there's nothing. And a lot of times you actually do get both. So you're getting this opportunity to be more proactive with this lead versus just kind of them coming in. Um, but know that that's kind of where the hook is. So the other thing that we've done before, and this was actually an accident, is um, thankfully we get a lot of referrals um, on our team. And so we also get agents that ask us to share their listings because we do have, we get a lot of attention on Facebook. So we had someone that said, will you please share this? And this was in Utah. And of course, Utah is perfect. It's a feeder area. We have lots of Californians that are moving out there. So I said, Liz, make sure let's do an ad for this one. Well, she accidentally did an ad in that other territory. And then she, we ended up getting 39 leads for $45 for that agent. So, so that's number two is if you are paying attention and you can look for this in command and find out where are people from Danville, Oakland, where are these people moving to, right? So, and then you can actually target those areas and you could do one of two ways, right? If you call someone that's in the area, which by the one there, that's a contact. It's a great way to make a conversation. Ask them if you can advertise their listing all in your area. You can then advertise who's looking in Utah, who's looking in Portland, who's looking in Seattle, um, Austin, right? These are all the areas that lots of people are moving to. If you add that there, there's a very likelihood that you would get a seller, right? Because you may have someone that has a home to sell here and that's moving. So this is an opportunity for two pieces of business. And then again, what our accident was is that we actually advertised it in their territory. So we advertised it for her in Utah. And we found that we were able to get, um, again, 39 leads for $45, which is a great price. And it's a great way to share with your referral partners. So again, another opportunity for more business. And I'd love it. Has anyone, does anyone think that this might be something that they would be willing to do? You don't have to have your own listings, you guys, as well, if you're a new agent, right? So go ahead and ask someone in the marketplace, whether it's Silicon Valley, whether it's San Francisco, whether it's someone in our office, you do have to get permission. And when we do that, we always make sure to put that agent's name in there so they are getting some recognition. And as long as they understand what's going on, right, you're looking for business for them, most people will be very excited. Erin, do you have a comment? I mean, well, what human, I'm sorry, if an agent ever came up to me and they were like, hey, I'm sorry, I'm going to pay to try to find a buyer for your listing. I, what am I going to say? No, how dare you? Right, right. Leave yeah. my office at once. Absolutely. Yeah, and again, it's a great way. We're at Keller Williams, right, where uh, we love profit share. You know, you doesn't have to be a Keller Williams agent. It's a great opportunity to build relationships with other agents as well. As asking them, hey, at Keller Williams, we have this amazing tool and people are having great success. That listing that you have, I see it's been sitting on the market for a couple of weeks. I would love to advertise and try and find the buyer. I think it's a great house. I think it's a great opportunity. I'd love to work with you. Can I please advertise your listing? I'll pay for it myself. And of course, I'm looking for a buyer. And just like Aaron said, I think people would be very, very excited. And again, it's another way of building a relationship. So by the way, that's another thing that you can do is you actually can advertise for recruits. I mean, you can create your own ad. So you can, I know there are agents that literally write this on there and share something about a Keller Williams class or um, you know, just conversation, what you've learned, and then you can actually uh, target to try and get agents to recruit too. So that's another thing that certainly does work out. Um, and then I suppose you, uh, I mean, really you can do anything. I would love for someone to give us a little bit of feedback on what they're thinking. And then otherwise we'll go straight into the ads from there so you can see what we're talking about a little bit. But I would love to have some questions so that I make sure that we're not just running through this completely. 
as soon as I run a few, I'll be letting you know how it goes for uh, running ads and social media posts that aren't directly related to listings. I'll keep you posted on it because I'm excited about it. Uh, that's part of my uh, big plan for 2021 um, with everything that's going on. So I will definitely keep you posted on what ads that are not directly listing or, or buyer related. And I'll let you know how that performs. Yeah, I love that. And I know um, Zareen on our team has gone out and she actually has taken pictures in. She works in the Fremont market. We currently don't have listings there. That's where she really wants to specialize. And so she has actually gone out and taken, picture, taken pictures of other people's listings. And we have um, created some of these ads. So, and she's had, again, good conversations. I don't think we've had anyone that's incredibly active. However, she is getting conversations and people are clicking on there. So Zareen, are you there? Is there anything that you want to share about that? Uh-oh. So Patrice, until Zareen appears, um, do you talk to the listing agent and then does she go out and take the pictures or do you and take the pictures? The situations because she's literally um, saying that we do say that it's with another brokerage, but on those we don't. If I'm actually taking their photos though, their professional photos, then I think that we have to. But when we're just taking pictures and saying, oh my God, this is my favorite house that's on the market. Oh. On those, we haven't been because it's, again, it's just us. We're going out on social media and then we do put something on there to show the other company that it's for. Um, oh. But on those, I haven't. Maybe I should, to be quite honest, but, but I haven't because it was our photos. I do feel, feel like when it's someone else's photos, you really have to make sure that you have their permission, right? If you're using their text, but if we're just out there taking a couple of candid shots or a selfie in front of it, mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, that's just really us trying to get something for the market. So I haven't as of yet. I guess if Phil watches it, we'll see if uh, <laughs> if he says something different. Again, we do make sure to say that it's not our listing though. So that we definitely do. is very clear. Oh, okay. So you, you know just what? say, you just say, oh, we love this, you know, I, you know, we love this property, not our listing. And what, and so what's, what are your, like, what's the call to action or what are you expecting from that, from that activity? I'm hoping that someone will want to see it. You know, Zareen says, I was just out on tour and this is my favorite house for the day. You know, um, is anyone looking for a buyer? That kind of thing. So it's- Oh, really I see. Like, okay. Yeah, okay. I love this house. I wish I was the one to sell it. You know, who's looking? Because I would love to represent you. Oh, God, thank you. Okay. Yeah. Erin, were you going to say something on that as well? I typed it in there. Um, but I think you could also, if anybody was ever nervous or if you don't have um, any listings, you could always just go on to Shutterstock. Right, you're not saying it's your listing, it, you guys. Like 99.9% .9 of the time, no one is going to buy the listing in the ad. That is not the point, right? We use this because we want to get people that are willing to buy something, and because it is a great value add for our sellers. But like, just to be clear, don't expect this one. And I would love for it to, and I'm sure it happens sometimes, but the point of it really is to get it in front of as many people as humanly possible. Cause that's how we do the best job for a seller. And we can hopefully get some people that are interested in real estate on the side. So Shutterstock, they have stock photos. So you can go on there and buy a photo. Um, you could go on there and look for home in this area or home that looks like it's in this area, something, and then you just pay for it and you have the rights to it. And then you could just write something. Like she was saying, maybe not saying it's your listing, but you know, hope my buyer loves this. I don't Absolutely. know, hope they do. And, and you could be, you know, just talking about the area and thank you, Erin, because that is such a great point. And, um, you know, you, you could do pictures, pictures from the area, you can do Golden Gate Bridge, whatever it is. This is my favorite area to sell. Um, you know, let me tell, show you the, the top homes, right? You know, you could say that, you know, best opportunities in San Francisco, you know, lowest prices per square foot and see, you can really be as creative as you want and just think about what is it that buyers are looking for and what's the profile and um, you're looking for those kind of communications. And again, I haven't done this. I would really like to get in there looking for seller leads and kind of figure out that same place. You know, you could say, hey, most of our buyers are coming from Seattle. I don't think that's necessary, right? you know, call me to ask me questions if, if you're looking for a buyer for your property or something, you know, you could really get as creative as you want, you guys, you know, look at the bold classes, look at some of those scripts, try and find some of that wording, some of those things that are for a call to action and just kind of, you know, put it out there as bait. We're talking about a lead being $2 and 91 cents, right? You can run a $10 ad. So this is a great opportunity to kind of figure out your message. What's the buyer that you're looking for? You know, if you want to be in luxury, you know, do you could pose a question and show a really gorgeous house and you know what are the top 
sellers looking for from a buyer's offer and see if that's what they're looking for. I mean, you could say multiple, tired of multiple offers, click here, I have a solution, right? You really can find any hook that you want. And I think this is where it gets to be interesting. And you guys, don't forget, this is Keller Williams where we share everything. So there are likely lots of different ads that you can find. You can go to connect and get lots of ideas too, right? Aaron and I are just here to inspire you with our ideas and kind of how we have. There are so many resources on connect in command and opportunities, um, the smart plans where you can really go and, and copy some, co right? Copy what everyone else is doing is such an easy way. We don't have to reinvent the wheel. You just want to customize it a tiny bit. I mean, and think of that value, right? Like what would be a value of a seller? I haven't done this, but you just made me think of this. So like, maybe it would be really powerful to do like click here for staging tips thinking about selling, click here to see what you have to do, right? Something that's like of value. So if they actually click, they'll get it. Cause I know for cool. buyers, like giving out, right. I mean, I don't, uh, uh, this claim, I don't know if it works, um, but I just thought about it. But cause I know like a buyer's guide has gotten so much traction when people have done that in our office of like click here for your buyer's guide. Um, so I just kind of wonder, you know, what are those value pieces that we can give to sellers? I love that. Oh. Well, and there's one you said buyer's guide, right? Click yeah. here for a free seller's guide, right? Want to know, it's so expensive to sell a house. Want to find out more, you know, what's the, the cheapest way to sell a house in this market, right? How much does it cost to sell a million dollar homes? City transfer tax in Oakland, yikes. Want to know more? Question mark, right? Anyone who's automatic Ooh. of those things may click on that. And again, we're, we're working in our area. And here's the other deal, you guys. Remember, these aren't leads. You just want someone that wants that in, I mean, these aren't, deals that you're looking for again great if you get it you're looking for people that live in our area to put in your database you're looking for an opportunity right so when you're clicking you just got permission they gave you permission to be in a relationship with them right kind of right it's kind of that gray area but they did they clicked that button they said they wanted more information based on what facebook is sharing we now have the opportunity to get into a relationship with them it really is just your time to shine now the questions and the stuff that you're leading with should be something that you are prepared to have a discussion about. It should be something that reflects your level of business, right? So if you're if you're not working in luxury right now, that's not your forte, don't lead with that. Then lead with a first time buyer seminar. Lead with quest, five questions first time buyers love to hear. I remember we were in um, mega camp and I was in this amazing mastermind and they said, always have like a five questions and kind of make a list, right? What are the top five things that you need to know when selling using probate? What are the top five things to know when you're a senior that's selling their home? What are the top five things that a first time buyer needs to know, right? You literally can create that with anything, right? What are the top five things you need to know when writing in a multiple offer situation? What are the top five things you need to know so that you don't lose your deposit? Again, I won't go through every one, but I'm sure everyone can kind of guess that the sky's the limit, you guys. And again, it'll be really interesting to test this. And because it's so inexpensive, you get to decide where you want to focus your business. You know, maybe ch choose a few. Because this is a business. We are in a self-employed business. We are expected to spend 10% of our income to go back to marketing. Every one of us. We have a very high price point. And it's funny because when these classes that we go to, a lot of times, I've certainly been the... Uh, um, one of those ones that spends too much. I also think there are a lot of agents that spend too little, right? We are supposed to be marketing these listings. We are supposed to be marketing our own business. And again, this is just a great way to make sure that you're marketing yourself however you choose. Does anyone have any, any suggestions or ideas on what we can do? Because I'm actually going to go through an ad and put one together now. And I'd love it if someone has an idea. If not, I'm just going to do a simple one, or we can we can decide to do one together. So, oh, here we go. Do I offer this information? So, yeah, you'll see when we go through, they only let so many words to go in one section, and then you can leave a little bit more. Remember, you want to leave them wanting more. That's kind of the advice I've given my daughter, and I've focused on in my life, right? That's the key to everything in life is you got to have a little bit of power. So you don't want to give them everything, right? So it's really just that hook. Right. We have the hook and we want to give them a little bit of bait so that they'll. Um, Lori, I think what you're asking is, you know, in when you're building the ad, you can click for them to go to another page or click for them to go to a landing page. If you are giving them something like click here for a buyer's guide, 
on that landing page will be the buyer's guide, or you will take them to a page where they actually receive that. Um, not just to your listings. Cause then if you called me afterwards, I'd be pretty pissed. You didn't give me what you said you were going to. So yeah. So it is a link to what you said you were going to give them. Right. And you probably need to have something, um, either uploaded or a really good buyer and seller's guide from somewhere um, that they can download and keep. Yeah, download. You know what I haven't tried yet, but maybe I'll try that later and it could be super easy is even like a Google Drive link, right? If you have it where anyone with the link can access it and I know nothing about like technology and security and things that way, but in my mind, that would be even simpler than doing some ad. It's just like they click on the link and that's your whole buyer's guide and it's read only and they can have it. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. And our title companies, um, I don't know how it works with paperwork, but I remember when I first got started, they would have lots of information, uh, lots of information, lots of packets that they could give you. So I would bet that they have some level of resource. Now you should customize it somewhat. Remember, we're in a marketing business and you're presenting yourself. So you know, take some of their information. You also, you guys can do a search online on Google and find information that resonates with you and customize it so that it's a little bit more. Um, and I would definitely be specific. And don't forget about trend graphics, you guys. Erin, I don't think you have it. Uh, I don't know if you have that app that works with for you. As a member of Keller Williams Danville, your trend graphics comes with your, your monthly fee. And that is a fabulous tool. So it's a tool, Erin, just so you know too, and everyone who does hasn't worked with it, you can literally, you find out the statistics for everything that's happened in our market. So you can look over and you can look at a month, you can look at um, a year, you can look at three years, you can look at 20 years and say, um, you know, 20, who's curious about the 20 year trend in California real estate or for a specific city. And these numbers are amazing. You will impress people so much by using that. So again, get creative and just think about what people would really wanna know. What are the questions that people are asking? Um, what would you want to know if you were thinking about buying in a pandemic? I mean, heck, that one may be good, right? What's the top five things you need to know about buying in a pandemic? I think I'm writing that one down. I would like Don't to take that one. That one's mine. Just take it. Yeah, Write it. No, really anything. So I think it's kind of interesting. So maybe, maybe that's one that we should do. And again, we can one use a house picture. Now I will Lovely say, and Avenue, you can use a picture of yourself, but typically they say that people that click on the houses. Close. I know for me, um, I've always... You know, we've gotten some online leads for a while. When it's my picture, no one cares, right? They don't want us, they want the house. So make sure you're getting something that's very compelling. So it needs to have some sort of a wow factor in there. You'll be more likely to get it. So again, if you're gonna have these kind of words, don't just lead with the words. You do wanna have a picture that is gonna grab someone's attention and then the words are gonna take them to the next step and then you want them to click through from there. So just be really creative on what you would see on some of your favorite ads. Um, Let's hop into the ads. I want to see this in action. Yeah. I know. Screen share. I want to learn all of this from you. I know. Like, okay. Um, here we go. Screen share. Command dashboard. Okay, that's the one. Can I also just say that this is how much Patrice believes in all of this. She is in Vegas taking time away from the playground for rock stars uh, to come and teach all of this. You know, I literally off to the side is the uh, Eiffel Tower and the Bellagio Fountains is really off to the side of me. It's actually really beautiful. So at least it's a nice room to be to be in. Um, but yes, I do. It, this really does mean a lot to me. And we are here for the weekend for my son's 21st birthday. And I do think that this is really important. So and so thank you, Aaron, for saying that. OK, so here is the screen, you guys. Um, we have I just came to the home. I just want to make sure that everyone is on there. Um, and again, I won't be able to see the chat because I only see actually. I'm Aaron. on it. Okay, good. So, so we're going to click through. Okay, so everyone knows these buttons. I've logged in already. Here's everything here. So you're just going to scroll down. By the way, the opportunities is amazing. That's definitely something that everyone should check out and play with. It's really, really simple. We don't have a class on that. And that someday, Erin, that might be a nice thing to kind of braid in because that really is fantastic. So here's campaign. So this is the campaigns. We're just going to click on this button here. I also, you guys, it's probably a little slow because I've got hotel internet, so, so bear with me. The universe always gives us the lessons that we need and patience is a good one for me, actually. Where are you, Patrice? What hotel? I'm oh, at Paris. Oh my God. 
yeah, it's nice. And I don't know if you can see, but we have actually, it's a nice, it's a nice, it's a nice room. It's a nice thing about COVID, right? It's easy to get really nice rooms easily. Okay, so here we are on our dashboard, you guys, and you can see what's going on. So here's my last 30 days. I don't know all of this with our on target, actually. I haven't gotten into that, but you'll see it has our, um, oh, look at this. This is really nice, actually. We talked about campaigns that work. Here we are, look what, look what uh, Command does. This isn't something that I created, right? These guys are actually showing what got the most leads, the lowest cost per lead, and the most engagement. Oh, so that's kind of fun. Our 308 West, Me uh, West Meadow is actually mine, so that's nice. Or heck, maybe these are ours actually, and Liz does it. So to be honest, you guys, Liz does these ads. So I have to say, other than for the class, I don't always do it. But anyway, you can see all of the data that's on here. Whoops, up. so I'm gonna click through. So you will have to put a credit card in if you're gonna use it, and I'm gonna move you guys out of the way so I can click on create a new campaign. So it's very simple. This create a new campaign button seems to be pretty much everywhere. So here we go. So we are going to do a social paid ad. I've never tried the Google ones. I've only ever done the social. So I just wanna be really upfront. So what do we do? Again, typically we are advertising our listings. However, we wanna trick click on this button that says attract buyers. So that's where we're gonna get the leads. So, and then, so we're gonna click on Facebook. We're gonna say attract buyers. And I'm gonna say set up campaigns. You'll have to take into account what the inspector. So I just wanted to go back over so you can see everything that's on there. But again, you sell a lot in an area, you're the neighborhood specialist. Maybe this might be a good one, right? Advertise the multiple listings. Uh, um, so Facebook and let's see, come on. Uh -oh. oh, I need a name, sorry. Obviously we have to put a name on there. So I'm gonna call this test or LA class. Okay. So let's try that again. Sorry, guys. You can see what the inspections reveal and what the sold price of Melvin is, period. They okay. Okie dokie. So we have name and goal. No listing selected. So um, we it's easy for us to just add one of our own listings. So for, for now, I'll click on that just because we don't have the class. But do know that you can add your own listings on there and just kind of submit your pictures, right? So I'm going to click on this listing that we have which by the way, we're working on selling. It's a little, it's a mixed use. So if anyone's looking for a retail space with a house, we've got that. So I'm glad that we're gonna be doing this one because we need to. So we, whoop. okay, so we actually have, looks like the text comes in from the MLS and I'm gonna change that. So headline, notice that it only, I'm doing this with my finger, I better do it with my mouse. This one only allows up to 100. So this is where we kind of want to have a little bit of a tag. So um, does anyone want to give suggestions and we can kind of do this together and then we can get some interaction. Does anyone want to share with me what they would do? Again, this is kind of a unique opportunity. And so that's what I would say, but I'd love, I'd love to hear it. If you guys want to make this with me, I'll share the stats on how well this goes if, if anyone's interested. I've been told that emojis and headlines attract more. Ooh, I love that. Thank you. Okay. I love emojis. I used to have a problem with emojis. I was worried I didn't seem serious enough. So does it say which particular emojis? Um, I did some with like fingers down, like click here. Um, oh, that's all I really remember. And maybe houses. I don't know. I'm not really versed in emojis. Okay. Well, I'm going to do, I've got a bam, a thumb and a house. So can you guys can see this, I suppose, right? Yeah, even for the dollars, you can just put like a dollar emojis. Oh, cool. So I'm going to say unique mixed uh, live work opportunity because I feel like these days people may want to have a live and workspace because people aren't going in. Opportunity. And I'm going to say that it's in Concord because I find that Concord is hot right now. Or maybe we should say in growing... Um, Oops. And high growth area. So we're going to kind of tease them a little bit with this one. So I put lit, unique live work opportunity in high growth area. Okay, I better finish with an emoji. Thank you for that. That's so cool that you said that about the emojis. I think that's awesome. Okay, we're going to do a check mark and I'm going to do a hand clap. I kind of use the same emojis pretty much all the time. Okay, well, in with a unicorn because everything's better with a unicorn on there. 
Okay. Does anyone have any comments or suggestions on the main copy? I'm just going to kind of just, again, write a little something that's fairly vague that I'm hoping that will get them to click on it. In the past, like I said, we hadn't because we were just doing our listings, but we want to get more specific. And like I said, I'll report our findings, so it'll be really nice. So does anyone have any suggestions? If not, I'll just start writing. Right, right, right. Okay, so I'm going to say, oh, I guess you guys, I don't have to tell you. Popular, popular area. I, what you guys don't know is when I have someone, I always talk out loud. So I'm really having, it's hard to type without actually saying it out loud, which is kind of crazy. But um, So single, single family home and retail space with Lots of room for expansion. Whoops. And then I'm going to say property zoned. Whoops. Obviously, I did not take typing in school. And up to 10 units. So as you can see, I'm just kind of leaving it out there that this really is what the property is is look um is available for and i do think it's a great opportunity so i'm hoping that that'll kind of get anyone does anyone have any um ideas i'm going to put some emojis while you guys are thinking okay we're going to give a check mark because i think that's cool uh maybe a fun oh my gosh face that looks exciting um okay so call our pme today for a and I always say, call me for a private tour. And then, um, oops, I've got someone trying to come in. Sorry. I guess it's, um, uh, really, I'm always trying to get someone just to click on, to call for a private tour, but I'm going to say, click here for more information because that's really what we're going to have. Hey, Jeffrey, are you on here? And you guys, I just want to say too that Jeffrey teaches lots of classes. So as we know, there's always something on the calendar. So he's going to get into more details. We're just doing kind of the short and sweet. But there's definitely going to be lots more um, detail and you can get a lot deeper and he can he has lots of information. So and then the other thing is he told us he is going to be we have this four series class. He's going to be doing a class that's starting hopefully within the next month or so. That's really going to talk about starting your day using command. What do you do from the beginning where you have your leads on when you're doing your ads? He's really going to get deep on a lot of stuff. So definitely watch the calendar for all of that, hopefully over the, um, the next month or so. Okay, so click here for more information. I like a dot, 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 because that's just me. Okay. And then description. Okay. That was my main copy. I'm not going to put more, much more in the description, actually. So again, um, I'm just going to talk about the opportunity on this one. Um, in the fast um, and I really do believe that Concord's one of the fastest growing markets on the east in the East Bay. I've been calling it the the next frontier for a long time. So I truly do believe this. Obviously, I wouldn't say, wouldn't write it if I didn't say. And again, this is something that if someone calls me, I will be able to stand behind and have a real good conversation about. So you want to make sure that if someone wants to have this discussion, especially because some people may not agree with you, that you want to have it there. So okay, I'm going to click Save Ad Text. And I think that's plenty for right now. Okay. Okay. And I now I'm like, okay, Facebook ad, yes. Okay. So we have my account. You do have to have a business page, you guys. So of course, I'm going to put it on my business page. So I, again, I know Jeffrey does classes talking about um, those business pages. And hold on for one second. Oh, it's the chat. Is there any, I see people are writing in the chat. I don't get to read it. So is there, Erin, is there anything that I should know? Is someone asking questions or sharing? Just singing your praises. Oh, well, thank you. I'll stop for that anytime. Just kidding. Um, and you guys, you know, I'm being a little bit silly, but make sure when you're doing ads that you are showing your past personality, right? You are looking to attract the kind of buyer 
that is most naturally going to want choose to work with you, right? So I I can do great with my engineer buyers. I love uh, attorneys and all level of clients that are tricky. Actually, I'm actually really good with solving problems. So I track those easily. When I'm looking on Facebook, though, I don't think those guys are spending a whole lot of time on Facebook. I find that a lot of my friends and I are on Facebook, so it's people like us. And I find that personality gets out there. So don't be afraid to use your own personality of what, however you are specific, because you want to make sure you're attracting that type of person to you. So, okay. So, okay. So notice we just have the learn more. So I just leave it at learn more. You can do all of those things, right? So if you actually have a class, if you're doing a first time buyer class, you might want to say, sign up. Um, if you are sending something out for agents and you say, you know, we're looking for an amazing agent, you might want to say apply now. So Again, I haven't tried much more. We're just using the learn more. So that's kind of where we go. Okay, so you can do a follow up. Let's see, I think we, I'm gonna pick one that we already have. I think we just put it going to my Keller Williams site and then people will have to look up for it. Notice you can do everything. You can see what we have already. Download my app. You can create all kinds of different things. We've got an about me page. So you can really advertise anything that you want. For now, we're just going straight to my website, actually. Remember, this is taking them to the site, but we're also capturing their information. So they're getting a little taste of what they're looking for, maybe not exactly. And then we have the opportunity to follow up. And I spoke about this last week, and I think we only talked about it in New York. So I will share that you guys, sometimes people are annoyed that um, I didn't quite give them the information they were looking for. They're not exactly seeing what they want. What they're getting is an opportunity to get that information. And what I tell them very sincerely is, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to mislead you. What I do want to let you know is that I made a commitment to our seller that we would do the most, um, the most to make sure that their home sells. So I know that when you click on it and see a picture of their house, especially this unique property here, it's unlikely that you'll be able to get all of the information. So I promised them that I would speak with everyone that inquired. So I'm happy to give you the information and don't worry, I'm not going to be pushy with you. I just want to make sure that I have the opportunity to speak with anyone that may be interested because that was my commitment to the seller. So don't be afraid when someone comes to you and says, this isn't exactly, we are in a sales position and we shouldn't be embarrassed about that. So I think that's really, really important to know is don't be fearful because you know, we are, we're, we are putting someone on a hook. They may not always enjoy being caught. This is your opportunity to convert them. And the way that you respond is probably going to be very important to how they respond next, right? So that makes a big difference. And I don't know if Diana's still on, but Diana, I know you've had some of these conversations that you've turned them around for people. Do you want to share anything about that? Are you still on the call? Yes, I'm still here. Um, yeah, I've had a few where people are just like, no, I, I don't want anything. Why are you calling me? Um, I just wanted to the information. <clears throat> Sorry, I had to clear my throat. Um, and then I've had a few where they're like, well, I'm not really interested. I'm like, well, even though you're not interested now, can I just catch up and, you know, call you once a month just to catch up on how you are and get to know you as a person so that when you are ready, you know, we can have that relationship because I'm all about building the relationship first and then helping you buy a home second. And they seem to like that. And they say, yeah, sure, fine, go ahead, give me a call. And I now scheduled once a month to give them a call and just see how they're doing and get to know them more. So you're earning their trust. And Diana, we've been doing this. So Diana's on my team, right? And Diana's a, a very, a new agent, right? Is just getting started. Uh, Diana, I think was looking for an, an open house. Uh, we expected her to convert. She's very, very charming, very personable. And converting over the phone, you guys, on these kind of leads, this is a very high degree. And Diana, I know that your success has gone up with starting with scripts. Don't you agree that calling all of these people again and again, that your skill level has improved? You guys, that's amazing too. We're paying for leads that you're actually getting into real conversations so that you can improve your skills. And I think that's so important. So Diana, would you agree? Yes, that and then doing the whole following up too of like, okay, I send an email and then like maybe a day or two later call and then be like, oh, did you get that email? And then after I've even called and left them a message about getting that email, I'll resend another email again, just checking that they got that email. And after I've done that one, I notice most of the time they'll open their email after that. I love that. So I've noticed a little trend with that. And you guys, that's the fantastic. only way that you, oh, go ahead, sorry. No, I was just going to say that's fantastic. The script, the follow-up plan, I love it. And, and isn't it amazing, right? You know, again, Gary talks a lot about data and that's where the Millionaire Real Estate Agent book came from is he compiled it from data. There's no way that you can get specific data on your business unless you have enough calls and touches. That's part of the magic with Bold. The reason that you call and speak with so many people is because number one, you it makes you better. Number two, statistically, I found that um, 
every time you speak with 100 people, one out of three are likely to be ready to do business or know someone who they could refer to you within the next year or so. So statistically, that's good. And then also you're just getting better and you're getting real time feedback. What are today's buyers looking for? And it gives you the opportunity to build these relationships in addition to and honestly, a relationship build built a relationship, sorry, based business is what the MREA is all about, right? Touching someone 72 times in two years is really about earning their trust and showing them who you are as a person, right? And again, Diana's having these great conversations with people that know she's a realtor. She's not embarrassed about it. She's very kind. She's really respectful. And we're really making it clear that you don't have to buy, right? I can't force you to buy a house. It takes a lot of work. And oh, by the way, if and when it's time for you or someone that you know to buy, I would be honored if you considered us as your realtor, because I can tell you that we're very proactive. As you can see, we're calling people constantly. And when our sellers hire us, they know that we're going to be on the phone for them. Is that something you're looking for in a realtor, right? So you can ask that question. By the way, that's a tie down that Kristen teaches me when we do our coaching. So um, definitely make sure to have these questions and these scripts ready, you guys, because it really does make a difference. And Aaron, I know you do this at a high level as well. Will you share some of um, your your closing and kind of what you would do in this situation? In terms of the script? Like, or- yeah, when you get one of these leads, like, can you just do like a little mini of, of how that would work out? Because I know our office really loves scripts and I think it'd be nice to hear from you because... Um, you may have something slightly different than than Diana or me. No, I think what you guys said is exactly right. It's all about building that relationship. So, you know, when are you looking to go? I mean, it's just the basic scripts, basic scripts, right? Of when, what, where, why. If you were to move, where would you go? Yes. Oh, yes. Where do you move? When would you be looking to move? What would make you move? Um, I see that you were clicking on the link, so you must be interested. Is it for you or someone you know? Things like that. Guys, I hope you're taking notes because this is the, those questions are brilliant, right? So, you know, we could talk about our properties, but it's kind of like it's exactly what Aaron said. Tell me why you're asking. What are you looking for? What, what what compelled you to click on that property? Is there something that I can help with? And just asking questions. If you were to move, it's just like she said. It's the forward questions and it's the bold questions of the script, and just getting them talking. So, thank you, Aaron. That was definitely very helpful. Okay, so you guys, as you can see, I just clicked them over to my website. Like I said, as we kind of got into and digressed a little, this is not going to be exactly what they're looking for. However, they are going to be clicking on it. Now we have their information. Okay, here's where you can get really custom, right? So this property is in Concord. And remember I was saying earlier, you're getting people that are in that location. So you can decide if you want to go a little bit larger and I'll just click on this. So you can target your database if you choose. Not a bad idea. I know Terry Tucker in our office who does amazing business Um, I remember learning so much from him in one of his classes and he is very relationship and he gets a lot of referral business and has a very supportive network. And what he does is he targets when he sends out just listed cards, he sends those to his database, right? You can literally just do this just for your database and ask for referrals because these guys know, love and trust you. You're likely to actually have a higher rate of return, right? Couple this with making some phone calls and sending them a card. And this is very MREA, making sure that you're touching them in all of these ways. So I just wanted to kind of point that out that you can just click your dark, your database. So here we have a custom audience. I'm going to go wider. The reason that I'm going wider for Concord is because I find that people are coming all the way from the Silicon Valley for Concord lately, and they're coming all the way from San Francisco. So I'm happy to go up a little. Now, I will say before... I, it's not happening this time, but I have had it before where it got all the way up to like 99 and I had to back out and it was a little a little um, buggy. I'm grateful that this is working, but I'm going to go to, let's do 30 miles. Or we'll do 31 just for fun. So I want it to be wider because I know that's where people are looking for. Also, we cover Alameda and Contra Costa County and it's a very big area. But if you want to get specific in your ads, again, if you're that neighborhood agent, Make sure you're only doing it within your few miles because you're going to have a more efficient lead. You're more likely to to get touches in your area. So this is kind of a shotgun approach. That's just for me. So you guys can go there. Okay. This is really interesting too. So if you want, you can click on, and I'm not going to do it. Well, I guess I will see it on here. And again, in a slow internet, but you could click on people that are looking up houses and, um, and it actually compiles that data. Again, the more specific you get, with all of these elements here, the more likely that you're gonna get the buyer that you're looking for. And be really specific about the demographic of your buyer. I'm not trying to go against fair housing, but you know, this is an example that you guys probably won't run into, but like if I'm trying to post a studio, 
I'm not going to start posting things for families, right? They're not going to fit. So just try yeah. to pay attention to who that buyer actually might be and what they might be interested in. Correct. You just can't put on there to say looking for a family or looking for a single. So make sure you don't have those things in your text, right? You can't put that in your ad. And Aaron is right. You absolutely want to be as specific as possible. So, um, so let's see, I'm going to say, uh, Again, I apologize for the slow internet, you guys. So I'm just going to look up house. I looked up opportunity. Nothing came up. But look, see, so you can, these guys are looking up house. I'm like, all right. These guys like this. So I'm going to click on this. Um, I'm going to say, and I don't know which ones works. So I'm going to say live work, right? I don't, it doesn't exactly have a guide. There are so many options. So we're li literally choosing, through, uh, choosing to work through. So let me say work from home. Let's see if that comes up. Because remember, I have a mixed use space. Okay, that it's didn't work really out. It's really important to make sure that you have it on or, right? Instead of and, and will narrow down or makes your audience larger. Thank you, yes. So, okay, so I've pressed on home. Let's see, let me go. What about Zillow? Oh, that's a great one. I'm gonna click on that one too. So I'm gonna, so I'm looking up investor and investment. Okay, so let's see. Um, real estate investing, right? I think that sounds nice. Okay, then let's press Zillow. Yeah, that's a great idea. Let's see if Zillow does come up. Yep, oh, yep. I guess I'll take them too. So that means we may as well do Redfin, especially in, I don't know um, about you guys in New York, Erin, but I know that we have a lot of people in our market that use Redfin. So you guys, we all know that Redfin is, has cut laid off a lot of agents. They don't quite do the same level of service. So if we can, let's see if it comes up. Okay. Nope. Discount? Broker? I mean, again, this isn't really the client that I would prefer, to be honest, but I'm just curious as an example of kind of if it would come out because we don't know exactly what it's there. And typically, this would not take quite so long, you guys. Just remember that I am on hotel internet. Okay. So I'm going to say broker. Mortgage broker, real estate broker. Why not? Let's see, I'm gonna book up home alone. Let's see if that comes to anything. Okay, and then I'll stop there. But again, I think you can kind of get the idea of you can go anywhere that you want. And again, you wanna get more specific so that you're more likely to touch the right people. Erin, can you think about anything else? No, and I usually, I have to be honest with you, I usually only put three because I don't want it to be so broad. I wanna be really narrowed down to who I'm getting in front of. Okay. Yeah, and this one's a test ad. So I'm again, Liz does these for us, and Jeffrey has really coached her on the best ways to do it. So I don't know if I need a ten, but we'll keep it on for this particular one. Patrice, go ahead. Can we ask Erin like what she what she uses for? Please. Yeah. So when I'm doing it, you know, I really just try to think of the buyer. So to be honest with you, a lot of times I'm in units that are super well done. They're a little bit more on the luxury side. So I'm doing things like health and wellness, right? Because I have a feeling my buyers actually care about things like health and wellness. I will do Zillow as well. Um, I can't think of what my third one usually is, but it's almost always health and wellness and Zillow and then one more. I love that health and wellness. That's a really unique thing to kind of go for lifestyle actually. Thank you, Karen, for that question. Yeah, and then is and then does Facebook then just um, limit its, you know, its um its audience to those groups or does it go beyond those target groups nope then it's only the people that follow that group but if you notice when patrice was uh putting people's or sorry not people's she was putting in interests it mm -hmm. was saying like this interest has 10 million blah 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 followers this one has 5 million blah 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 and if you have it on or it will then pull everyone who has one of those interests versus if you do and it's like, okay, well, this person has to be interested in health and wellness and Zillow and something else. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why I think or is important. Although who knows, maybe it could be, oh, see that estimated audience, 682 yeah. million. So just a couple of people. Yeah, so we should still be pretty good. Although, yeah, Aaron, you made a really good point. And again, I only, I was, I kind of actually went a little too broad. I was just clicking on the housey ones. I love how Aaron picked a lifestyle because again, you're trying to get someone that you're looking for. So the luxury property, obviously that kind of thing would be really nice. So. Um, 
we just were specific. Thank you for that. That was helpful. Karen, did that answer your question? Yeah, thanks so much. Uh -huh. Awesome. And you guys, there's really not much more. So here we do. I, I like to do save as a draft. So I'm going to do that before we click and then our class is almost over. But this is how we've gone through. While I'm doing this, please let us know if you guys have any questions and I'll just kind of click through. But as you see, this is very, very simple. Um, and it's really something you can click through and it's really easy. Again, I just want to make sure that you save the drafts. And otherwise you're all set. And again, you can see my numbers. We've had 47,000 people look at us. So great exposure. And then now that we have it in the draft, right? So I'm just going to click on the draft. Let's see, or right. click on this button here. Yeah. So would you pair that down? I take it. Or, on pair, what do you mean pair that down? Say that again. Because it, it's $515. Is that for, is that for this ad? That's her last 30 day spend. Oh, oh yeah, sorry. Okay. So yeah, how do we know what the cost is gonna be? That was right down below. Sorry if I, let's see, I'm gonna click on that right now. And now it's like, hello. So typically when I click on this, it opens and I think I may have clicked on it too many times here now. And also you can look at the right side, it says TC, the total cost. I don't even see that because mine's covered, but okay. Oh, that's where you are. Oh yeah. So, and again, I'll just scroll down so you could see, look at, you could see for each of these ads, right? Mm -hmm. And it will keep all of that data. So I can see which ones are better than the other ones, right? I could see the ones that are getting the most impressions and really we can compile that data and move forward. And I just, I'm having a hard time getting it to open. Then to finalize it, Patrice, what do you do? Um, there was a button right at the bottom and now I'm looking to find that little button. I'm like, why am I not able to? Okay, here we go. Edit campaign. Sorry, I had that little, um, my Zoom screen was covering what I needed to click on apparently. And then, yeah, so I'll show you at the bottom and then it's, it's very simple. Okay, so here we are. So we've got our ad already ready. Here's the, the duration and the budget. Let's click on it here. Oops. So we just do, you can have your daily budget of $3. So I think our total campaign budget, I'm just going to do $10 on this particular one. Because again, this is just a little bit of a test and it has to be at least a dollar a day, as you see. So you can actually put it here. So this is where it will run and it starts the next day. So I'm glad actually I saw that because it does start the next day and I'm going to only run this till Friday. So you can see how you can change it. And again, notice how easy this is just to lick on. You look on, you can toggle it, but it always starts for the next day. Mm -hmm. And then that's all. And then we'll just kind of save the duration and the budget oh, greater than today. So it's funny because it populated today and then it has me. So very easy to change. Pop it over. And then right now, and I have to move it, you just click on the publish campaign. Oh, I missed a field, you guys, sorry. Ad media. It might be this one down here. It's the ad media. Oh, thank you. I thought we clicked on that one already. Okay, so I'm not going to do our logo. We're just going to kind of move forward. So save the ad media. Thank you. Oh. That's funny. I don't remember us having a logo on this before, actually. So hmm. I did not have my logo ready. So I'm just going to, I'm going to snap a screenshot in there. And do you have it. a KW logo on there at all in your computer? I have, I do have, I have a plenty of ads on my computer. I've never seen this logo. Is this always there actually? I guess so. I, I haven't seen it. I didn't realize it was a required field, but they could have made I didn't it. Either. Maybe. They probably did recently make it as one. Yeah. Cause I've, I'm like, I've never quite had this before actually. Um, Tracy per day per channel is like, if you want, when you go under social ad, uh, when it's through Facebook, because they own Facebook and Instagram, It'll show up as you can put, you know, let's say your spend is $2 a day. So you can do, you know, $1 for Instagram, $1 for Facebook, or all of it just towards one. So that's the per day per channel. Okay. So I do have our KW logo, so I'm just going to pop that baby in there. Hopefully it'll make it happy. And by the way, again, it's kind of good that this came up because if someone doesn't have their logo, we definitely can get this from the office. So um, Christy, should they be getting this? Or how would they already have this? Is this just in the resources um, for their int intranet? On on KW, yes. Okay. Um, 
Okay, so I click save. We'll, we'll do we'll do an email blast and, and send out the newest ones for everyone. Perfect. It's been a little while. So I'm kind of glad that that happened actually, because obviously everyone is going to need to have a logo. So you need a credit card. You need your logo ready. So as you can see, there's a check mark, and so Erin was very easy. It was easy for her to know where we need need to. And I'm going to click publish campaign. There's my credit card. Create campaign. As you guys can see, this really does walk it through you in a very simple way. I am definitely a late adopter, and I'm not the most techie. Um, and it's very I'm simple to go through. Patrice, I'm very <laughs> impressed with your skills right now. Thank you. Very. This is so awesome. My first class I jumped in, so. Oh, I just good. Say, well, hey, you're doing awesome. Well, thank I'm you. And again, impressed. Jeffrey does this at a higher level, and there, and so does Sheila. So the point of me doing that, what I hope is valuable, is I'm not the most techie, and yet I'm able to do it. Everyone on this call will very easily be able to do this. Our office and all of our market centers have so many classes, you guys. So please get in there. You'll see that it now says pending review, and it's just going to start tomorrow. So I would love to hear comments. I know we only have work. We're, we're kind of over by a little bit. Um, love to hear from everyone. Patrice, and it's great. It's nice to have somebody who isn't like a real tech doing it because I can relate better. Well, I think that's kind of what works out well with this series, right? Is it's it's yeah. real agents going through real challenges yeah. together. And so we're learning from one another. So, and Erin, I don't know if you're still there. I know you have to go. So are you she still there? Can you say? She did, okay. So um, yeah, sorry, we went a little bit long and um, I'm trying to open up this screen here so that I can see everybody. So. Anything else? Technically, we're we're past our session time. Um, but I, if anyone has questions, I'm certainly happy to 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 answer any if I if I know the answer. And if not, then we'll all find it out together, right? Because that's the power of KW is that we all work together, and I think it's a neat format. And I'm so grateful that you were all here today. Um, it was nice. So thank you. How long are you in Paris? Well, I'm here. I fly back on Tuesday. Okay. You loving it? I am. Well, I'm only in Vegas, Paris, actually. Oh, oh, really? Oh, okay. I thought you were in yeah. Europe. Okay. Okay. Well, that's good no. to, that works. No, I wish at some point we'd like to, but no, my son turned 21 last week. And so we came here to Vegas to do Fun. a little celebrating. So we had a really nice dinner in the Eiffel Tower last night and he played blackjack for the first time. So it's kind of fun. Um, and then we teach another class uh, with New York a little bit later. So if anybody wants to pop on again, I, it's going to basically be the same information. But of course, it's always a great opportunity to meet more people. Uh, next week, we will not have a class because of the holiday. So the next time that we're meeting is going to be November 5th. And that's going to be talking about building your referrals, why it's a good idea, some great ideas to do it. Of course, um, using the database and command and how we're actually able to go from getting one referral to building a relationship so that we get more referral business. Um, so we'll be talking about those stories that we hope that you'll join us. And then the last class will be on December 9th. It's actually on a Wednesday and Erin will be teaching and it's the database class. She's very passionate about this. It's super educational. I just saw it when, when she and I taught a class in Panama last month and it's fantastic. And you guys, I think one of the coolest things and though I were doing this is I was closed minded to command for a very long time until I realized that this is the app that Gary is creating that accompanies the book, The Millionaire Real Estate Agent. And if we really believe in the principles, then we should start adapting and adopting the system that he's created so that we can do this at a high level, right? And of course, there's some obstacles that come up. And I think we can turn them all into opportunities because it's making us go head to head and face to face, face to face with our clients even more so. Um, the link for Aaron's class, I believe that it was on our Facebook from when I sent out the post on Monday and I think our office sent it out, but I can post it on the Danville website um, so that you can come to the New York class because it does have a different Zoom link. Anything else? Let me see if I don't know if I missed anything else. Do you know what time it is, Patrice? New York. I'm sorry, say that again. You know what time it is today? It's at it's 11 o'clock our time. So it's two o'clock their time. And actually, if you guys want to wait a second, I can actually, will it let me get the Zoom link? I think I can maybe get it from my calendar. So if you don't mind waiting, then I will click it in because I'm hoping that it's in there. Oh, oh sorry, there's my screen share. You guys, by the way, um, I've got the DTD2. A lot of the stuff with all these calls, a good way to get through your database once you have these is the DTD2. We're going to talk about that. So um, I just happened to have that up on the screen, so it made me think about it. So I'm going to stop sc sharing screen. Okay. Ah, that's why I couldn't see any of the chats because I was sharing my screen. Again, not the biggest tech person over here. Okay, so I'm going to go on my calendar. For everybody that needs to go, feel free to ask 
any questions before you go, thank you for coming. And for those of you that'll stay, I'm gonna see if I have the link in my calendar. Oh, yep, I do. So I'm gonna copy the Zoom link right now and put it in our chat. Okay. So there's the Zoom link for New York. It's 11 o'clock our time. Happy for you guys to come. Thank you very much for joining us and have a really great day.